Yeah, you're especially at a disadvantage because you don't have headphones on. Yeah. <laughs> I remember listening to the Wally show and they was always like, just lean in on that mic. So that's what you got to remember is we just got to stay on top of the microphones and you're going to be fine. All I'd, will be well. I honestly did notice, though, like recording the other podcast the other day, mm-hmm. that um, I did better, I feel like, about how I sounded and things like that yeah. as I was doing uh, this style of microphone. I realized their audio is different because I think I gave you the cord plugged into one and I'm on two, which I'm not used to. Oh, yeah, I see it now. It's not that loud in my headphones, so I think it's fine. Okay. But And this one always gives a low, like a lesser signal yeah on there which i don't understand but it always ends up working so it is i mean if it works it works yeah but uh this is the better together podcast my name is justin lee and i'm labry and we're happy to have you guys here with us today as we work through these different technical things of changing up the setup if you're watching on the youtube channel then you can see that we are in the new studio Mm -hmm. everything is pretty much set up as far as the studio i think is concerned yeah i think yeah the set is pretty That's set. a better way to say it. As far as having a set, this is pretty much what it's going to be, mm-hmm. what it's going to look like. And I think it turned out pretty good. Yeah. And I, it even gave me, like, I had a completely different angle than this when I recorded the other podcast last night. Oh. And I was still sitting on the couch, but, like, I just had it at an angle. You could see there's a bike over here to Bree's side. You can't see it in this podcast as well, so... But it just gave me a whole different vibe, a whole different look than normal. Yeah. You can create different feelings from just this one space. And, like, I know you guys are seeing it from straight on. But just tweaking the angle a little bit will completely change the vibe. The only thing left to do, really, is just to bring my desk down here, finish out some of the flooring, and finish out the painting. And then it really is done. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't really affect our ability to use it to record the podcasts and to do different things like that. So Yeah. It's not going to affect this part no the background is pretty much set maybe some more decor on our bookshelves and things like that but overall we'll get there. you know that's just small tweaking stuff yeah Something big we'll get there before too long yeah but i know that's not why anybody clicked on this episode of the podcast no, today. not at all today we are talking about the subject of church mm-hmm. and really to be more in depth on that we're talking about church attendance and if you need to go to church absolutely yes you know why the why? bible says to Well, we're going to get into that because I think that this is going to be kind of like a polarizing episode. I feel like I'm going to upset people on both sides of the aisle. Eh, I mean, it's possible. I think there's a pretty good chance that (laughs) because I think that we have a very balanced view. But that balanced view can also be what causes people to not not agree with you as much. And so Mm -hmm. that's really what I want to talk about, because I think that people really question the need for church attendance a whole lot. And we heavily value church attendance. In Mm -hmm. fact, The video that came out before this podcast, we made a vlog all about church attendance. Yeah. And we kind of talked about a lot of the things that we're going to talk about this in not as much detail Mm -hmm. in that video. And so now we're going to be able to bring this podcast, talk about things in a little bit greater detail, search these things out in the scripture and just see what what it really means to attend church. Mm -hmm. And I think a big thing that people uh, don't think about is the way that they ask these questions. Yeah. Real quick, I do want to say that this is going to be a very complex episode of the podcast as far as like there's so much that we could talk about and there's so much that I want to talk about. And Mm -hmm. I could see us not getting to everything and every point and things Mm -hmm. like that. And so if we don't touch on something that you have maybe questions about you struggle with or maybe there's a point that you have Mm -hmm. that we don't touch on, then just let us know. Send us an email at moregodlessmepodcast at gmail.com or, you know, you can leave a comment, something like that. Yeah. And just let us know you know, what it is that we didn't cover that you might want to hear more about. Because, again, this is going to be a lot of information, and there's a lot of different ways that you could go with this Mm -hmm. when talking about church attendance. But at the end of the day, it's something that needs to be talked about because, like you said, the Bible does talk about church attendance Mm -hmm. and the reasons that we should be in church. Yep. So um, I think, though, like I was saying, I think one of the big issues that people struggle with is that they ask the wrong question. Yeah, I can see that. There's a whole lot more questions about like, do I have to? Do I have to go to church? Is is church a requirement for my salvation? Mm-hmm. And that's not really the way that we should ask anything in the faith. No. First and foremost, it shouldn't be like, well, can Christians do this or can Christians do that or what are we allowed to do and mm-hmm. not allowed to do? There's things that we specifically are and are not allowed to do as Christians. Yes. That mm-hmm. that much is that's abundantly black and white. clear. There are <laughs> black and white issues like that. But then there's a lot mm-hmm. of things that the Bible doesn't touch on specifically. Yeah. And in those moments, we don't need to think like, well, the Bible doesn't say I have to. We need to think about what's best for our faith. Mm-hmm. 
And church is one of those things that's best for our faith. Yes, we really 100%. need it. Now, I I agree with you that the Bible does say we need to go to church, mm -hmm. but church also isn't a salvation issue. Yeah, right. And that's where things like this get polarizing. Mm -hmm. Is it's like you should be in church, but at the same time, when we look at the plan of salvation, church isn't mentioned in it. I mean, if we look at Acts chapter two, verse thirty-eight, mm -hmm. it says, "And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit." Mm -hmm. Nowhere in that verse does it say that we have to go to church yeah. in order to be saved. It doesn't say, men and brethren, what should we do? And they're like, be at church every Sunday. But how are you supposed to accomplish the things that are taught in the Bible if you don't go to church and learn what's taught in the Bible and you read point. the Bible yeah. and all that? So, it, yes, it doesn't say it, but I feel like it's implied. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's a great point and a great way to think about that is that if you want to be able to, um, if you want to do the things that that's talking about, if mm -hmm. you want to repent and if you want to be baptized and if you want to receive the Holy Ghost, then you're going to have to probably be in church anyway. These yeah. things don't happen in the workplace. They don't happen in the mountains. And it's not to say that it can't. No. But uh, the typical place that it does take place is the church. You're going to have a far easier time doing godly things, walking through the plan of mm -hmm. salvation. And living a Christian life if you're in the church. Yes, if you're in an atmosphere that is specifically set up to draw you closer to God. Yes, that's so. exactly the truth. Mm -hmm. You need to be in an atmosphere that's primed and ready and is in that place mm -hmm. to be connected with God. Yep. That's just, that's the honest truth mm -hmm. of it. And we're going to get more to that a little bit because I want to talk about some things in that. But first, we need to look at what the Bible says about church. Like you said, the Bible does say that we should be in church, mm -hmm. right? And where that says that is in Hebrews chapter 10, verses— 25. Well, yes, I was going to read 24 <laughs> and 25, but look at you. Yeah. You did do your I studying did. today. I did. But it says, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, mm -hmm. not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. And I'm sure you all can agree— it does look more and more every day like the end is coming. Yes, it so, does. It does appear that the day is drawing more and more near by the minute. So that means we should be assembling together with like-minded believers. Yeah, and it's interesting because he says in there specifically, not neglecting meeting together as is the habit of son, mm -hmm. but encouraging people all the more. Mm -hmm. And so what's interesting about that is when you think about the early church, is that they were meeting together daily. Yeah. The Bible is pretty clear that they were meeting together in one another's house and sharing meals and, and doing teaching. And some of them were going to the synagogues because mm -hmm. we didn't have church buildings in the very onset of the church. Yeah, it's church then is not like church now. But not it's it's it is and isn't, yes. right? Like there weren't dedicated church buildings because they didn't have the opportunity or the ability to have those mm -hmm. buildings. I believe that if they could have had the finances and the freedoms, yeah. really, mm -hmm. to have a church building in the early centuries, I think they would have had a place that they gathered together. 1, and really, that's what they were doing in their homes. Their yeah. homes became churches. In fact, Paul says, he writes to one person, he says, in the church that, um, he says something about, to the church that meets in your home. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they're meeting as a church body in a home. The first home missions field. Yes, right? <laughs> the whole home missions field. But... And the way you think I think about that is that's another thing that a lot of people want to argue about. Mm -hmm. A lot of people want to be like, well, you know, the church isn't a building. It's the people. And it's like, that's 100 percent right. Yeah. But, but where you are you going to get together with the people? Where are you going to do that? <laughs> you know, like, yeah, you can invite people to your house. You can do things like mm -hmm. that. But at the end of the day, the best place to be a part of the church body is to be in a church building mm -hmm. on a regular basis. And I think that's like it's just kind of scheduled. Yeah. Right. Like we have three services a week. We mm -hmm. go on Wednesdays and we go twice on Sundays. And the expectation is that pretty much all of us are going to be there. Yep. And that's a good thing. That's an mm -hmm. expectation that we should want to have in the church. We should yeah. want to be with the body of believers and be with other people mm -hmm. and draw closer to people. Yeah. Like I know pastor says it a lot um, because he travels around and he sees a bunch of different churches and things. And like a lot of times there'll be a dip between yeah. the services like Sunday morning. You might have a whole bunch of people Sunday night, a little less Wednesday night, even less. No, like it's set at our church. There's going to be oh yeah, about just about like probably maybe 10 or so off the same amount of people at the service yeah. at every single service. 
and I don't want to I don't want to talk bad about anybody or anything like that. But you know, I think that the reason that we see that at our church is because our pastoral team, mm -hmm. the leaders in the church, everybody values church yeah. and when you value something it works its way down mm -hmm. and so when the pastor values church the congregation is going to value church mm -hmm. and so we have to understand that and know that that's that's what that is and mm -hmm. so when you see a church that doesn't value its own tendencies you have to ask does the pastor value these yeah. things and when a pastor is cutting out services this is kind of what i referenced last week about like my strong opinions on mm -hmm. things but when a pastor decides to get rid of church services, that shows that he doesn't value those services. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be concerned with how many people are in a seat. Our pastor's been blessed because he's held on to his church services and his members have continued to come to all the services. Yep. But even if you're a pastor listening to this and you only have five people coming on Wednesday, don't cancel service on Wednesday. You've got five people coming. Yeah. That's still a reason to have church. The Bible mm -hmm. doesn't say where 500 are gathered, I will be there. He says we're two or three. Yeah. So as long as there are people coming, do it. And really... Even if nobody's coming at the moment, mm -hmm. like if we ever get to that point where like this stuff in our city takes off and we're planning a church and mm -hmm. I'm I'm leading and things like that. Even if there's somebody if nobody shows up on Wednesday, we're going to be there. And it's and it's just even if it was just me, mm -hmm. I'm going to preach like there was people there, because what if somebody walks in? Yeah, I'm not going to close the doors on a church on a day that it's expected to be open because I'm discouraged that no one's there. Mm hmm. I mean, to be honest, we're doing this podcast in a lot of ways for nobody. But what if somebody does need this message? Yeah. Then we need to get it out there. Mm -hmm. Like we have a few people that seem to listen regularly to the podcast and things like that. But at the end of the day, we don't have a big field yeah. of people listening to this. And that's OK, because mm -hmm. the few apparently are the ones that need to hear it. Mm -hmm. And they enjoy it and things. But like, God forbid that we don't do what God's called us to do. Yeah. And someone needs it but doesn't get it. I have a hard time to believe that God would ever call anybody to close the doors of the church. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so that means that you're going against the will of God. God's will is for his people to be able to meet yeah. together. And if you're closing the doors, that's limiting people's ability to meet together. Mm -hmm. Like uh, It wasn't this year. I think it was the year before last mm -hmm. that Christmas happened to fall on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And people were canceling church services because what better day yeah. to go to church than Christmas. Than Christmas when you're celebrating the birth of your Savior. The entire reason... Mm -hmm that we have for going to church in the first place. Yeah. And it was this last Christmas. It wasn't this Christmas. Yeah. It was the one before. It was this last Christmas. No, this was on a Monday. Christmas Eve was on Sunday. Uh, oh, yeah, because it messed with my family thing. Because I wasn't writing on the articles anymore either. Yeah. Okay. Because yep, I wrote a whole article about it. But well. anyways, there's an inside track <laughs> there. Um, Little rabbit hole, sorry. Yeah, but... So that's a very important thing to think about. Mm -hmm. But also, I want to go back to that verse in Hebrews because it talks about stirring one another up to love and to good works. Mm -hmm. And it talks about, like, what I see that as is community. Yeah. And one of the most important aspects of church is community. And mm -hmm. that's because we weren't meant to walk through this life as Christians alone. No. Nowhere in the Bible do we see, like, people having to go on things alone. There are some people that end up in alone mm -hmm. times, but then God reminds them. Like, when yeah. you take Elijah... Elijah was alone, mm -hmm. but then God says, hey, there's some other people. There's still 7,000 who haven't ba uh, bowed the knee to bow. He's mm -hmm. like, oh. Yep. Well, and you got to think back to the very beginning. God created Adam, and he's like, hmm, it's not good that you're alone. Yeah. Let's create Eve. He said, you're going to need somebody else. <laughs> and so then he created somebody else. Yeah. But But we're meant to be in community, and we mm -hmm. can see that in so many different ways. I mean, we all have gifts. We mm -hmm. all have abilities that God has given us, and those abilities are meant not for our own benefit. No. I think we lose that a lot of times. Yeah. We want to use the gift that God's given us, whatever it is, to profit yeah, on a we lot want of it, times. We, we want, want it to, to use benefit that yourself. Yeah, as a benefit for ourselves. So, oh, mm -hmm. well, I'm really good at this, so that's the kind of work I'm going to do, or mm -hmm. I'm really good at this, so this is what I'm going to do. And it's like, no, that's not Yeah. That's not the way that we're supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. There's a better way that we're supposed to do these things. Yes. And that's God's way. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's an important thing to remember because every part of the body is important as well. Like the reason you have giftings is because we need you mm -hmm. and we have giftings that make us necessary for you. Every part is important. And we all rely mm -hmm. on each other. And we see that. I, I was going to say, I'm sure you're going to reference the scripture about we're all uh, members of the same body. Yes. <laughs> but like I have a couple verses that really mm -hmm. nail this home. It's like First Peter chapter four verse ten says, "As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace." Mm -hmm. So right there, Peter makes it clear that we've each received a gift, 
and that we need to use it as a good steward of the grace given to us by God. Mm -hmm. But then like you're saying, uh, you have 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where it says, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. I thought that's where, oh, sorry. It's 1 Corinthians 12, 12. Oh. I told you I had multiple verses. <laughs> but that verse says, one body with many members. Mm -hmm. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. Mm -hmm. And then after that. It talks about not everyone can be an ear, not everyone can be yes. a foot, and all that. We are all made to work together yeah. to come together and complete the body as a whole. Mm -hmm. Like We can't be without each other. We can't and, function. And just being properly. in the church isn't even enough. Yeah. Right? Because then that just means that you're a paralyzed body. Mm -hmm. You've got all the parts that you need, but, but those parts working. aren't working. Mm -hmm. And so it causes other parts to have to work harder. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing you have to realize is when you're not in the body, Someone else is doing the role that God created you to fulfill. Yep. And so the, your church, a local church, needs you to do what God created you to do. Yeah. And that's what's going to help them function to their best. It's going to get them into the next level. Mm -hmm. It's what's going to get more people into the church when every part is fitting where it needs to be mm -hmm. and is in the right place. Yeah. But that's the thing is that we need that community. And mm -hmm. that's what we need when life gets difficult. Yes. I mean, I think that what we real, we overlook sometimes is we're like, oh, church is such a burden. Church isn't a burden. No. Church is a blessing from God. Amen. And that blessing comes in the fact that it connects us with like-minded believers mm -hmm. who are going to be able to help us on our walk with God. They're going to be able to encourage us when life seems to be doing nothing but going wrong. Yeah. They're going to be able to... And we have experience in that area yeah. <laughs> with some, some things that are going on, just not even in our lives, mm -hmm. but in the lives of others around us right now. We're going to be able to get advice from people on how to best raise our kids. Yeah. We're going to be able to just figure out so many things mm -hmm. so much easier and according to how God wants us to do it than if we were to go anywhere else, if we go to our friends in the church. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to find the help that you need in the world. No. The help that you need is going to be found in God. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure there's scripture for that too. Well, yes, but <laughs> I just it's it's yeah. what we need to realize though mm -hmm. is like the church is important because we need one another. Yeah, and uh, sorry guys, if you can hear something in the background, it it's our child. <laughs> He's having some fun. But I was reading earlier. Um, someone actually put out a little. Uh, I say a little article. Put out a article about five surprising benefits of going to church and in one of them it talks about not only uh community but the support you g get from other believers yeah and everything that we've talked about of course is on here because it's all that they're all benefits but to me they're not surprising no i don't feel like those are surprising benefits. no like the, those are just the great things that come from being yes. in a church body the one that you may consider surprising is it does list um, that it uh, people who go to church are healthier. Huh. But if you look at how the people in the world act and how they live yeah. and what they consume versus what the church consumes, of course we're healthier. Well, and when you look at things like that, though, <laughs> it's interesting because um, a lot of studies will say, like, well, people who do this or do that, like people who work in a, a, a workplace with other people mm -hmm. are healthier and things like yeah. that. Having community is going to mm -hmm. make you help, healthier. And then when you have community that's pushing you towards better things, mm -hmm. because a lot of sinful things that other people are going to point you to are not the things that you should be doing and they're not healthy or good for you. Mm -hmm. And so when you have a healthy relationship with people who are interested in bettering themselves mm -hmm. and doing good things, obviously you're going to experience better things. Yeah. And like we've discussed this before, it's it's like the people in the church don't really age. There are people that we know <laughs> like that, where it's like you can go back and watch videos on our church's YouTube channel because they were doing it before it was cool. Yeah. And there are people in our church that look exactly the same 15, 20 or years later. And they're they older look people. even better. There are people that, yeah, like, there are people that weird. do look better. And it's like, and like our church, we don't do makeup and mm -hmm. we don't do you know, a lot of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. We don't believe in, like, cosmetic surgery and stuff. So this is just, like, these people are just healthy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, They're I don't... just living life how God intended us to live life. And yeah. 
they are reaping the benefits of it. Yeah. And all these things are reasons that you should go to church yeah. and that you need to go to church. It's because you're going to have the community that you need, the mm-hmm. support system that you need. You're going to have relationships with people that are interested in going closer with God. Mm-hmm. And that's going to make it easier to live a Christian life. And I really like what you said about, you know, you're going to, um, how are you going to walk through the plan of salvation if you're not in the church? Mm-hmm. That's a great point and a great yeah. question that really you need to ask yourselves. How am I going to even get to the point of being saved? without the church. And that's really what I go into because as great as community is, as great as maybe the health benefits mm-hmm. are of being in church, being in community like that, the truth of the matter is at the end of the day, you need a pastor. Yeah. The Bible and that's about what it. people don't <laughs> want. Yeah. They don't want to be told what to do. And it goes against every fiber of our human nature to subject ourselves yeah. to someone else's authority. But no matter what you're doing in life, you are going to be subjected to someone else's authority. Well, yeah. I mean, you go to work every day. Mm-hmm. Even if you're your own boss, you, you're you still... Subject to the authority of your customers. Exactly. The people that you're doing the work for. Mm-hmm. No one ever is truly their own master. No. <laughs> and, well, and we all know that if God's real, then that's obviously the truth as yes. well. But uh, no, you're completely right. But I think mm-hmm. that we often overlook the fact that we need a pastor. And it's because people don't want to be pastored. They mm-hmm. don't want to be shepherded, even though it's what they... They don't want to be told, hey, I noticed some things. You might need to work on this. You know, pray about this and that and whatever. Like, no, I'm great just how I am. Yeah. Uh, we all could use some improvement. We could all use things. And that's why we need a spiritual... Uh, you know, overseer yeah. in our lives that's going to help us in those different ways. And that's exactly what we see in the Bible. Like Acts mm-hmm. chapter 20, verse 28 says, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock. This is speaking to people who have been set as overseers. Mm-hmm. But it says, pay cl- careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. So that verse alone is showing us that God has put people over the church. Yeah. He has put leaders over the church, and we need the spiritual leadership of somebody Mm -hmm. to help us on that walk with God. And that's why we have the fivefold ministry. Mm -hmm. That's the reason that God gave us evangelists, preachers, teachers, Mm -hmm. because we can't do it on our own. And shepherds, and shepherds would be what a pastor is today. But that's why God has given us those things. And God doesn't provide us with what we don't need. Exactly. That's what we have to understand is God isn't going to give you things that you don't need. If God has set up the fivefold ministry, if he has appointed pastors and leaders, that means that you need a pastor and a leader in your life. Yes. And that's no matter if you yourself are a pastor and a leader, you still need someone over you. Yeah. And like that's something oh, yeah, that— Oh, yeah, every level, a level of leadership, you need somebody higher than you. Yes. And I don't know how that ends, you know, as far <laughs> as like how, pastors. I don't know where. Because really what it is, though, with pastors especially is that there's like— you have your you have your pastor and mm-hmm. that person has their pastor. It's not like they're a higher level yeah. and they climb this ladder of mm-hmm. levels with preachers. But it's just the fact that the pastor that you either maybe served under or something like that, mm-hmm. when that person passes away, you look for a new pastor. Yeah. You to look be, for someone else as that spiritual authority in your life. Yeah, the guy, this person mm-hmm. that you know that God's appointed mm-hmm. as your over shepherd, your overseer, mm-hmm. to help you on that walk. Yeah. And this is the thing about that is you didn't get to having faith all of your own accord. Yeah. Obviously, no one saved you outside of God. Mm -hmm. You didn't save yourself. A pastor didn't save you. It was God that saved you. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't have had that life-saving message if it wasn't for someone. Yes. Someone brought you the faith. And we know, like if we look at Romans chapter 10, verses 14 through 17, I think this is interesting. Because it's the passage, it says, how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? Mm-hmm. And how are they to believe in him who they have never heard? Mm-hmm. And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Therefore, we must go to church. But, yeah, we, but, well, my point in that, though, is that you got the faith brought to you by Mm -hmm. somebody. Somebody preached to you, and maybe Mm -hmm. they weren't a preacher, but somebody preached to you. Somebody helped you get to the faith. The way that I also think about it, this, is you didn't bring yourself the gospel message, but someone else sowed it into your Mm -hmm. life, just like Jesus talked about. Yeah. He talks about sowing the seed, and some Mm -hmm. seed fell on good soil, some fell on rocky soil. All those things. in the ditch and all but this stuff. But people were sowing the mm-hmm. seed into your life. Now, 
if God had someone sow the seed into your life so that you could come to the faith, mm -hmm. how can we believe we can maintain the faith by ourselves? Yeah. The if garden we just doesn't grow on its own. Exactly. And so that's what I want to talk about was like our experience in the garden mm -hmm. and just how those those parallels would work. Yeah. Because we we plant a garden every yeah. year. I enjoy my garden. And like you started off, but like with a lot of things, stuff has come up and we have put that aside for you. Yeah. That is my thing. But like you've got to go out there. You have to first prepare the soil. Yeah. And I think that <laughs> comes into a big part when you really pay attention to what Jesus is saying in that parable of mm -hmm. the sower and the seed is that some of the seed was prepared and other soil had not yet been prepared. But that doesn't mean that soil can not eventually get to the state where the seed will grow. Mm -hmm. It just needs to be worked. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of times like what happens with people, though, the people have to have their heart prepared yeah. to hear what God has for them. Um, but back to the gardening thing, <laughs> if you have to prepare your soil, you have to maintain it. You've got to go out there, weed it, water it, exactly. um, keep pests away. Yeah. Like there's a whole bunch of stuff you have to provide support and structure. Mm, that'll but here's, preach. <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing too. Is if, and this is what people don't realize, mm -hmm. and this is why people, because somebody's listening to this right now, and they're saying, well, you know, I was in church for a while, but I'm doing just as good now in my faith than I ever was, and I've not been going to church. If we planted the garden, and mm -hmm. we did all the work, and we put the work into it, and we established a thriving garden, mm -hmm. and then we stopped mid-season, the it's garden wither away and die? No. Well, it will, eventually. Well, hold on. It'll produce, but... The garden's going to continue to produce. It's going to continue to do what it was doing before. Over mm -hmm. time, that production, though, is going to start to mm -hmm. slow. It's not always going to wither away and die, but it will change. And as the seasons change, mm -hmm. that's going to have a heavy effect on it. And if we stopped mid-season and we never came back to the garden, mm -hmm. if you just left a plot of land with plants planted, the next spring rolls around and those plants okay. will yeah. grow. It's going to be chaos, but mm -hmm. things will grow. Yeah. There will still be growth there. There will still be fruit produced from that garden, mm -hmm. but it's going to be less fruit mm -hmm. than there was before. A great way to look at that is a tomato plant. Mm -hmm. A tomato plant, if you just planted the tomato seed, it's going to grow a decent plant. Yeah. But what's going to happen is it's going to grow what they call suckers, and it's little tiny plants at the bottom, and mm -hmm. they suck the energy from the plant. And so to get the most fruit from that plant, you got to prune it. You have to prune the suckers off. And by pruning the suckers off, you're allowing it to produce more fruit than it would have otherwise. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of way that a pastor is able to work in our life on a continued basis. Yes, mm -hmm. you may have left the church, and you may still be reading your Bible, and you still may be praying right now. But mm -hmm. you can't say that your faith has grown exponentially since you stopped doing more for God. Mm -hmm. And the less that you do for God, over time that is slowly going to wither away. Mm -hmm. And next year, your faith may continue. And it may continue for another year at a lesser level. But eventually... It will all wither away. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be times where the weeds begin to choke it out. Mm -hmm. And in a few years, there won't be plants growing in that garden anymore. Yeah. The fruit will not be produced any longer mm -hmm. because the things of the world yeah. have come and overtake it. The natural things of that area mm -hmm. are going to overtake it. And the mm -hmm. things of this world are sin and the flesh. Mm -hmm. And those are going to overtake your spiritual life when you don't have somebody helping you to maintain it. Yeah. Because a tomato plant can't maintain itself. No. It can't prune its own suckers. It can't yeah. water itself. Mm -hmm. and, and if you've grown different types of tomatoes, they're not going to give themselves naturally the structure that they need yeah, to do what true. they need to do. But the other half of that is water. Mm -hmm. And you have to go water the garden. Mm -hmm. And if you stopped watering the garden... Again, the production might go down a little mm -hmm. bit, but it'll be okay. That is unless Something there's a, still... that is unless there's a drought. Mm -hmm. And then it'll all fry up real fast. It's all gonna fry up, and it will wither, like you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I was talking about good scenarios at first, Sorry. but in a in a normal season here in here in it's Tennessee, like if we just left it. It's gonna. <laughs> no, I think here in East Tennessee, if we left it most years, it's gonna be fine. Mm -hmm. But there will be the drought years that come, mm -hmm. and we're gonna experience spiritual droughts in our lives. Yep. And we need someone pouring into us in those mm -hmm. moments, helping to water us. Yes, you may have the water flowing through you right now, but what about when the bad time comes? Yeah. What about when this when you read your Bible and it doesn't affect you? Mm -hmm. Then you what need about those somebody. Dry spells? <laughs> and you don't just You're not need hearing from God. Yeah. And you don't just need a pastor. Yeah. You need you friends. Need, 
Well, yes. Yeah. We're on two different planes Sorry. tonight. But you don't just need a pastor. You need a spirit-led pastor. There's mm-hmm. a lot of pastors in this world today that aren't spirit-led. Mm-hmm. They're not being led by God, and they don't know what you need, and they're not having God tell them, this is the message you need to bring. Mm-hmm. This is what you need to preach to the people. And it'll change your life if you yeah. get in a spirit-led church and you have a spirit-led pastor. Mm-hmm. There have been countless times that over the years I've gone to church and like, oh, that's exactly what I needed. Yeah, I mean, that was the reason we're in ministry right now is because all of a sudden— there was just all these, and it was, okay, people were like, well, you know, they preach, no, like, I mean, I've been going to church for a long time, and yeah. we never had a spell where it was just a bunch of people preaching about doing the work that God called you to in these things, and the thing was at that season mm-hmm. is it was multiple pastors speaking into our life yeah. because we had evangelists coming through the church, mm-hmm. we had missionaries coming through the church, and we had our own pastoral team preaching at different moments in the church, mm-hmm. and all in about a three-week time span, they hit us exactly where we were, and it was like, this is what we've been asking God to show us. But that's what a spirit-led pastor can do. Mm -hmm. And that's probably why you may have left the church in the first place, is because you weren't going to a spirit-filled church. Mm -hmm. You weren't going to a church that was alive. You were going to a church that was dead, and that's why you felt the need to leave. Mm -hmm. But if you're in the right church environment, you're with spirit-led people, and you're with a spirit-led pastor, you're going to have exactly what you Mm -hmm. need from that person. You're going to be able to flourish as yeah. God has called you to be. Uh, like he's going to provide everything you need to be successful. Yeah. In your walk with him and in life in general, really. Yeah. There's a parable mm-hmm. that talks about basically being the husbandman or like the husbandman to yeah. a tree. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's so applicable to our life in Christ. Yeah. And I honestly never thought about it today until I was going through this. But when you really think about the garden like that, mm-hmm. And you really put all the pieces that we have in Scripture together. I mean, God literally says that somebody sows the seeds of faith into your life, and then Mm -hmm. if it finds good soil, it grows. But it took somebody to sow that seed. Mm -hmm. And as Paul talks about, somebody sows it, somebody else waters Mm -hmm. it, and God gives the increase. So it took two people, and what Paul's talking about, to increase the faith of these people. Mm -hmm. Why would we not believe that we need it maintained? Right. It needs to be maintained to produce the best things. Have you ever seen a house that you look at it and you know that someone used to love that house and like there was beautiful landscaping at one point Mm -hmm. but it's been abandoned and everything's just gone haywire exactly that's what it would be like because it just goes wild there needs to be maintenance and Mm -hmm. we can't maintain ourselves yeah for one we are going to lull ourselves into a sense of complacency we're never going to be as honest that we as we need to be with ourselves Mm -hmm. But if we have an honest pastor who's mm-hmm. willing to speak into our lives, they're going to be able to affect us in ways that we wouldn't be able to affect ourselves. Mm-hmm. But on that, that vein of husbands, if you look at Luke chapter 13, verses 6 through 9, it says, And he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, Look, for three years now I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why would it use up the ground? And he answered him, Sir, let alone this year, and I'll dig around it and put on manure, and then if it should bear fruit next year, well and good, but if not, I can cut it down. Mm -hmm. That's like what your pastor's saying to God. It's like, God, please let me just continue to work with this person. Let me Mm -hmm. continue to pour into them. Let me continue to do work and provide them with nutrients. Mm -hmm. That way they can grow and be where they need to be with you. And I don't believe that God's wanting to just cut down anybody. Mm -hmm. But at some point, we are all going to be cut down. (laughs) And we better hope that we were producing the right fruit, living the right lifestyle for God. But that's going to be a hard thing to do when we don't have somebody of spiritual influence speaking Mm -hmm. into our lives. And again, where are you going to find that other than the church? Yeah, because I don't know. I've not found it anywhere else. (laughs) Exactly. I know that you can experience God on a mountaintop. I Mm -hmm. know that you can experience God in your private time. Mm -hmm. I know that you can have a relationship with God that doesn't involve the church. I get that. Yeah. But But. (laughs) it's going to be so much easier to have that relationship Mm -hmm. with God when you have other people sharing that same relationship. And it's only going to increase what you're able to do in the spiritual. Yeah. Like, yes, you can do stuff alone and have a relationship with God on your own. But isn't it so much better to share this with other people? Exactly. When good news, when you get good news, don't you want to share it? When good things happen, don't you want to tell other people about it? It goes the same for the church. It's ne- it's a great place to share and encourage others 
and be together and grow. Exactly. And the thing about church is that it literally is an infusion Mm -hmm. of life and energy and joy Mm -hmm. into your life, especially when you, again, go to a spirit-filled church. And I can say that you've kind of grown up in a whole like spirit-filled thing, but being led by the Spirit, being filled with the Spirit makes a difference Mm -hmm. in church because I've gone to dead churches as as sincere as the people were, Mm -hmm. as loving as they were, they didn't have God's Spirit. And Mm so it was kind of a drag or a drain to go to church. But when you go to a church that's Spirit-filled, that's seeking after God, that's experiencing God Mm -hmm. on a Sunday, it is an infusion to your soul. You leave there different than you came Mm -hmm. in. And that's not to say that you you yourself get into a dry spell and you're struggling through um going the actual desire to go to church and all that that's going to happen but the life that gets breathed into you while you're there in church yeah is going to change it yes the actual want to of get up and go my it's and not always going to be easy. Yeah. It's when you leave church, though. So, like, yes. it, like you're not going to feel that infusion of joy and peace and hope mm-hmm. on the way to church. You're yeah. going to feel like, ah, oh, I'd rather have slept in today or I'd rather have done this. And I still mm-hmm. experience those things. Yeah. We're human. Yeah. It's going to happen. But when you leave church mm-hmm. is when you experience that. And I actually found a quote by um, D.L. Moody. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if you know who that is. But he I know was a the Christian name. leader a long mm-hmm. time ago. Anyways, he said that church attendance is as vital to a disciple as a transfusion of rich, healthy blood to a sick person. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly that thing is you feel better when you leave. You Mm -hmm. need that in order to feel better, to feel stronger, and to be able to walk better Mm -hmm. with God. And I think we experience that in our own lives. I mean, the video that we referenced earlier that we made Mm -hmm. on this subject was kind of about that because our son had been sick. And so we missed a Sunday mm-hmm. and like you get no, through. we just was like, Ugh. yeah, so it's, you've gone from Wednesday to Wednesday without church. Mm-hmm. And th- that Monday, Tuesday, and even like Wednesday during the day before church, it was like, man, yeah, I'm feeling just different. And mm-hmm. then I didn't even realize why I felt different until Wednesday that night when church starts and worship starts and mm-hmm. you start to get in the, 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 the. I don't even know how to describe the rhythm, the rhythm of church again. Mm -hmm. And like you just feel God in the place and other people are excited and praising God, Mm -hmm. which we'll get into that. I actually want to touch (laughs) that. But, you know, you you get into that that place of Mm -hmm. being in God's presence and God's spirit. And it's brought on not just by yourself. Yeah. But brought on by others. And it just makes you feel better. Mm -hmm. You feel what you were missing. And on that thing of other people Mm -hmm. is that's what you have to remember is it's not just about you at church. So like you may be having a bad day, but Mm -hmm. other people may be having a great day. And so they're going to praise and pray in a way that may inspire you Mm -hmm. to do that. Or there may be people that you know that have cancer, that have a rough life, that have difficulties, Mm -hmm. that are going through major struggles. And you then see them practicing their faith Mm -hmm. in a mighty, impactful way. And it's like, wow. You know what? Maybe my situation isn't so bad. Maybe I do have a reason to praise and to be thankful. And that's another reason to just be at church. Yeah. You get to see all that God's doing in other people's lives. And it's such a faith builder in your own life. Yeah. Um, I had something else, but now it's completely left me and I'm so sorry. I apologize. Well, I think that I'm just so glad that we're at church every time the doors are Mm -hmm. open. And that I can honestly share in the expression of David that I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Like, I'm glad that I can say that. But I have to be honest, that wasn't always the case. Mm -hmm. I didn't always live that way. And even, like, I've talked about spiritual church and things like that a Mm -hmm. whole lot. And that made a massive difference. But that still wasn't perfect. Even when I first started going to the church that we attend now, Mm -hmm. there were still times where I didn't want to go to church, where I would try to make an excuse Mm -hmm. after excuse after excuse of why maybe I don't want to go or I can't go or these different things. I'm just being honest. Mm -hmm. There were those moments in my life where I had those exact things happen, Mm -hmm. and that's all different now. Mm -hmm. And I think a big part of it is the fact that I couldn't value what I wasn't a part of. Yeah. And so, and I don't just mean like joining ministries and things Mm -hmm. like that, but even just actually being involved in what's going on. Like if Mm -hmm. if praise is going on, then praising God. Mm -hmm. If preaching is going on, then paying attention and taking notes. Yeah. (laughs) You know, like these things are being involved in the church and it gives you a better value Mm -hmm. for the church. And to make actual friends in the church also helps a lot. (laughs) That's been a huge thing. And like myself as a very social, outgoing person, having those friendships and stuff in church is extremely um benefit beneficial and necessary for yeah. me <laughs> but i know that 
as an introvert, it's been harder for you to want to bring other people into the fold. <laughs> yeah. But it's a conscious decision based on what I can see in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I can see in the Bible that we are supposed to be a part of community. Yep. And so I've made the choice to insert myself into community. It's it's like I need a personal relationship with mm -hmm. God, but I also need a shared relationship with God. Mm -hmm. I need people to rely on. And as much as we can rely on God, there are times that God wants us to rely on the body. That's mm -hmm. why he gave the gifts that we talked about earlier. Exactly. All these things tie together. The reason God gives us the church isn't so that we have a place to just waste some time on mm -hmm. a Sunday. It's not so that we, you know, all oh, listen to this one person. Church isn't this or that. Church mm -hmm. is so that God can bless us. God yes. blesses us through the preached word. Mm -hmm. God blesses us through meeting us in praise and worship. Mm -hmm. It's the place to be baptized, for yes. crying out loud. You can't <laughs> baptize yourself, you know? Mm, I mean, yeah. we, there's people, and this is what we ought to also realize, is mm -hmm. there are people everywhere that would love to be able to go to mm -hmm. church. There are people in countries that they're not allowed to be in church, mm -hmm. and they would want nothing more than to be able to freely go to church. And mm -hmm. here in America, there are Christians making excuses and trying to claim that there's no reason to go to church yep. when well, the Bible other, gives us every reason to go to church. Yeah. And like you're in other countries, people are risking their lives just they're to meet together. They're risking imprisonment to meet together yeah. as to a To be the church. Yeah. And to be the church means to go to a building that we refer to in the United States of America as a church. Mm -hmm. That's what being the church is today. I have a hard time to believe that you're being the church alone. Yes. The Bible says that we are the church, not mm -hmm. that you are the church. You're not the church alone. Yeah. We're the church as the body of believers. Just and like this, this podcast isn't us meeting together. No. This is a one-sided thing. Mm -hmm. Church is multi-sided. You get to have interactions with the pastor, with this person, with that person. With church the Church is multi-sided. Mm -hmm. That's what a relationship is. That's what being the church is. And mm -hmm. in our world, in our society today, the best way to be in the church and be a part of the church and to be what God maybe doesn't require of us in Scripture, but calls us to do in Scripture, is mm -hmm. to just have regular church attendance. Yeah. To have a local church body that you attend every time the doors are open and that you find a way to plug yourself in so that mm -hmm. you want to be there. Yeah. You need to be not only physically there, but mentally there. And in doing that, it's going to change so much about your life. But also in adding yourself in there mentally if you attach yourself to that church yeah. and do get involved in the ministries, it's going to change so much more in your life. Oh, yeah. Like you're going to be invested in that church, in the success of the church itself, and of the individual people. You're going to be invested in making sure that you're helping others when they need help and you are receiving help when you need help. Yeah. It's a firsthand hand opportunity to experience the word of god in action yes that's what going to church i mean honestly comes Honest, down to yeah. is that's you're getting to experience to god's word in action mm -hmm. that's what the book of acts is all about yeah. is the church in action but it's the church meeting together being together and just living through life together mm -hmm. and we are meant to live life as christians with one another we're meant mm -hmm. to make disciples yep. how do we make disciples well a good place to start is getting them in church yeah Bring getting them where you. the word of God is, where the mm -hmm. truth is, that's a great way to start that journey of making disciples. Mm -hmm. And I, this is, you know, we get to the very end and now I'm going to really insult some people. <laughs> but, you know, we're supposed to love God. Yeah. You know, and you have to ask yourselves, how much do I love God? If I'm not loving people. If not just that. If I'm not loving what he's created. Mm -hmm. If I'm not wanting to be in a place that is all about what he's about. Mm -hmm. God is all about making disciples. He's all about the truth being spread. He's all about, you know, praise and worship. He's all about meeting his people, and he's mm -hmm. all about helping one another. Well, that's what all the church is about. Yeah. And so how can you love God but hate the church? Mm -hmm. You can't. Yeah. Because God is synonymous with the church, and mm -hmm. the church is synonymous with God. Now, there are bad churches. Yes. There are churches that aren't actually Christian churches and mm -hmm. that are not synonymous with God. Yeah. But you can find good churches. You mm -hmm. can find churches that are going to help you to be wanting to be in them. Yes. And if you do need help finding a church, you are welcome to reach out to us. Uh, you can email yeah. us, comment, whatever, and we can help you find a church. We will do everything area. we can to and find you a good spirit-filled church that's going to draw you closer yeah. to God. And if we area. ourselves can't find it, we'll go to our pastor. Um, we will find an answer. And we will get you an answer. 
we will do everything that we can to put you in that environment because that's the environment that God wants you to be in, mm-hmm. and that's the environment that you need to be in. Uh-huh. But in conclusion, as we wrap this whole thing up, mm-hmm. the real question that I kind of, I think I'm probably going to title this and everything is, mm-hmm. do you need to go to church to be saved? No. You don't have to go to church to be saved. Mm-hmm. That's the simple answer. But that doesn't mean that you don't need church. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean there's no requirement. As we talked about in the yeah. beginning of the podcast, we're ending it the very same way. Mm-hmm. There's the not plan a of salvation doesn't but... require you to go to church. Jesus didn't say those who believe and attend church will be saved. He said those who believe and are baptized. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be really hard to believe and to be baptized mm-hmm. unless you're going to church. Yeah. Like that's just the honest truth, and our faith walk never ends, mm-hmm. and that means that our need to be in church never ends. Mm-hmm. I just I want you to understand that if you want to be the best Christian that you can be, then you need to be mm-hmm. in church. That's going to strengthen you. It's going to help you. It's going to provide someone in your life, a pastor, mm-hmm. who's going to be able to speak truth into your life and who's going to be able to help you maintain your faith. Mm-hmm. And just like with anything, you need like if you're on your job and or whatever. You've got to stop looking at the absolute requirements and look at what's necessary. Yeah. What's the, you know, that's one what, thing that we, we share that verse a lot mm-hmm. where it talks about how, um, you know, not everything is sinful for mm-hmm. you, but not everything is good for you. Yeah. Well, not everything is required of you, but there's still a lot of things that are good for you. Yeah. There, not everything's required, but a lot of stuff is beneficial. What's going to keep me closest to God? What's going to keep the most joy in my life? Mm-hmm. What's going to keep me making it towards salvation? Yep. And in a big way, that's going to church mm-hmm. because going to church is going to provide you with everything you need to live a healthy, happy life for God. Mm-hmm. And it's going to keep you easily connected. Yep. To God. That's just the simple truth. That's mm-hmm. the simple answer of this whole thing. And we can say from personal experiences, there, when you do miss church, you miss a church service at a spiritual field church, you feel that. Yeah. Like there is a lacking in your spirit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so getting back to that is so refreshing, like we said earlier, to get back into that environment and even there's been times where we've talked about the community aspect and stuff like that. You get to go to church, but you don't get to experience all of the aspects of the community part because life happens. You get there late, you're rushed around, blah, 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 whatever. And then you have to leave right as soon as it's done. Yeah. But you still feel such a refreshing and a renewing in your spirit that it's just like, worth <laughs> it. And I used to think so like, it. well, you know, I can, I can experience God just as well in the mountains or mm-hmm. I can experience God here. Or I can, Read the Bible for myself. And all those things are true. You can do all Mm -hmm. those things, but you're still going to do better to be in the church. Mm -hmm. That's the simple truth of it. And I really want to answer this one last thing is a lot of people want to make these things about like, well, church is just a modern thing or it's just a Western, Mm -hmm. you know, idea. Church isn't a modern thing. Yeah. It's just the furtherance of what the early church started under the ordination of God. This Mm -hmm. is what God called the early church to do was to meet together together was to make disciples, was Mm -hmm. to have leaders who would bring them the word regularly. They may Mm -hmm. not have had a single pastor. They may have had multiple, and we have multiple that preach on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. But all that is to say that this is just what God intended from the beginning. This Mm -hmm. is what the early church started, and this is where we have gotten to today. Church isn't some way of taking advantage of people or anything like that. It's just the opportunity to be under spiritual leadership and to meet together regularly. Mm -hmm. That's what the church provides us, and it's what we need in our lives to live the best Christian life and really to stay on the narrow path. Yeah. If the path is narrow that leads to heaven, mm-hmm. then we probably need something as a bumper and a guard to keep yeah. us on that path. And that thing that bumps and guards us is the church, other believers, and a spiritual leader. Mm-hmm. Those are the things that's going to keep us on the right path. So you don't have to go to church. But I have a hard time to believe that you're going to be able to make it to heaven and mm-hmm. be a, a Christian that you need to be without being in church, without having discipleship, without having other Mm faith-filled believers in your life, it's going to be nearly impossible. Yeah. Because the devil is going to do everything he can to take you out. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's what we finish on, is that, you know, Peter wrote that the Bible lurks around like a lion looking for who it may devour. You said the Bible, but the devil, yes. Oh, sorry. (laughs) Wow. The devil (laughs) lurks around like a lion prowling looking for who Mm -hmm. it may devour. Well, if the and devil's he, like a lion, then he's going to go after the person that's standing by themselves yep. because that's the easy target. Mm-hmm. 
right? Yeah. He's going to go after the one that's standing off to the side who's the not with the rest of the group. Back, all the groups up there. Exactly. And so you don't want to be that person. You want to mm-hmm. be with the group. You want to have the safety of the church around you. Mm-hmm. And churches aren't perfect. You're not going to no. find a perfect church that doesn't upset you. I'm not going to stand here and tell you, oh, my church is the best. I've never questioned anything. I've never been upset about mm-hmm. anything. No, church is real life, yeah. dealing with real people. And sometimes mm-hmm. you're not going to agree and sometimes you're going to get upset. But we have to realize we're all fallen, broken people. Yeah. We don't always all make the best decisions. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't change the fact that God has called us to live in community with other people. Amen. Yep. Mm-hmm. So how did the mic work out throughout the whole thing? I think it worked out pretty well for me. <laughs> I like it. I didn't fumble around too much with my hands, and I, I talk with my hands, so it worked out well for me. Yeah. I think once we get everything set up better, then, you know, once we have you have headphones, you'll be able to stay a little bit more in it. Yeah. But, I kind of move around it. I'm trying to stay with the microphone, but. But otherwise, no. And I I, I think we did such a hard transition there that it's kind of <laughs> funny to me now. I was like, so how was the mic stand? <laughs> Like, just that seems super random, but you know, that's just how how our brains work. Yeah, God's so good in all that He does. Yep, but uh, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the podcast. We hope we were clear and concise. Yeah. You know, when we do these teaching podcasts, we both study for it and come together, mm-hmm. and we both have ideas of where it's going to go. And so that's why we might be like bouncing around a little bit. But we hope that it's been a help to you. We hope that you can see how important church is mm-hmm. and the fact that we need to be in church. And it's not like I'm saying this as somebody who's trying to draw you. To my church. I don't. No, I, we just want you in a church, a yeah. spirit filled church. Yeah. Preferably an apostolic spirit yeah. for church, but that's beside the point. But we yeah. just want people to be in church because church is so valuable and it's mm-hmm. changed our lives and we know that it can change your life too. Mm-hmm. Nothing got better than after I started being purposeful about regular church attendance. Yeah. And so I just think that it's such an important subject and so many people question it nowadays. And it's like, I don't understand why you're questioning this. When we look at all the things that God provides, we find all of those in the church. No other place are we going to find everything that God wants us to be a part of. And so Mm -hmm. it's just so important that we get in the church while we have the opportunity and just be a part of what God's created for us. But I think that's all we've got for you guys today. So check back in on Monday for the More God Less Me podcast. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And God bless. God bless.